Hi, I'm Jennifer. Today, Scott's going to show you how to install the Zero One splitter from ACS Composite on my C7. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Scott and today we are going to be installing a ZR1 style front splitter on my wife's C7 Corvette. Now, basically what's going on here is that we got ACS has sent me this package and they sent it to me a couple months ago and I have just now getting a chance to be able to put, the, put it on the car. Uh, there was two reasons. One, I was really backed up. The other one was is that my wife broke it when they were doing a bunch of construction work out by her work and so I instantly did not want to just go and get the splitter, put a new splitter on it and then have her tear it apart again. So we went ahead and we waited until that construction got done. So today that's what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and put this thing on there and I'm really excited about it. One of the reasons that I am excited about it and I'll try to put some of that information up on the screen is that this new splitter has a little bit different angle of attack. So instead of it being pointed dead center down or just level, it has a little bit of an uptick to it. And because it is, is a little bit longer, it, it creates the look when you're looking at it from the ground of that it's you know nice and, and totally covers there and it looks very low when you're looking at the car. But when it's going through a dip or a turn, it has a little bit of an uplift so it allows you to actually clear a little bit better. So um, I'm going to try to get that graphic and put it up on the screen so you can see it um, because they show the angles there. And um, so I think it's actually going to work really, really well, even though it looks even more aggressive. So anyway, we're going to jump up to the front of the car now and um, I'll show you the damage that we did or she did that day and then uh, we'll go ahead and we'll show you how to install it, okay? So sit back and relax and we'll show you how it's done. Before we get started here, I just wanted to show you the damage that had gotten done here. You can see that it got hit pretty good, right? And this is just from going through a dip where they were repaving and resurfacing here and it just ripped it right off. So um, she's been living with this for about, oh, about two months, a little over two months now. And so they finally can finish the, uh, the construction. So I said, okay, well, fine. We'll go ahead and we'll put it back on now uh, with the new one. Now the new one's actually going to stick out a little bit farther here. It's going to come out a lot more aggressive. It's going to look more like the ZR1 style, even though you still got this front bumper. Now you guys know that I have a ZR1 front front nose on my car, and it has that big splitter. That's what this bottom piece is going to work. Uh, it, uh, it's going to do. It's going to look a lot more like that. It's a lot more aggressive than this one, um, but uh, it's you can still retain your front bumper and that gives you the clearance because the front bumper that I have on my car is a lot of, um, you know, I had to make a lot of adjustments to be able to make mine work. So uh, we're really excited about this part of it. So guys, sit back and relax and we're going to show you how to take this off and then we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll put the other one on. So I'm under the car and I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to remove the, this splitter. You guys have seen that a million times on how to do it. There's just some different uh, seven millimeter screws as well as some regular Phillips screws. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to take those off. And uh, once we get those all removed, I'll go ahead and uh, We'll go ahead and come back to the video then, and that will tie you up as far as um, doing this. It's very simple to build for how to get this, these to come out. We've got our screws out now, and so depending on if they used sticky tape on it or they didn't, um, or this one I, I did originally, so um, you may have to use a nylon pry tool. Let me show you that. If you guys haven't already seen one of those, you see me use them all the time, typically. Um, this will protect your paint. You can get them down in there like this and you can just start to pry this down. Okay, so you're just basically slowly prying this down. Just like that. Just to get this loose. Okay. There we go. Just like that. We'll bring this down just like that. And then at that point, you should be able to pull it down and get it, 
get it off the car. Then at that point, you'll need to go ahead and clean everything up here underneath the car before we go any further. So now that we've got the old splitter off and we've got the bottom of the car cleaned up, okay. Now what you want to be able to do is you're going to go down to all of your parts. Now it comes the box comes with the with the splitter itself as well as the side winglets and then the support rods as well as the hardware. And there's not a lot of hardware here to it, guys. So a lot of these, you're gonna be utilizing the same original factory screws to get it basically lined up, okay? And then at that point, you will be uh, drilling uh, some holes for the rivets, and then you'll be utilizing, um, like, you'll be utilizing this bolt right here as well as this one right here. This is where the support rods are gonna to go to. And then on the bottom of the splitter itself, there is an M, I think it's an M6, which is very similar to this one here, that will go in kind of like here at an angle that will actually support and give the splitter some, some major meat to it to be able to have it hold on. There, this, this thing is extremely, um, extremely solid. Uh, I was really surprised. I, I, I don't even know exactly how how uh, heavy it is, um, but it is really very very stout. Um, I'm very impressed with the quality of this thing. It's great. Um, so I'm very excited to be able to see what it's going to look like. This video is sponsored by ACS Composite, makers of quality accessories for your Corvette. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and put the splitter up here. Now if you have a friend that wants to be able to help you, you can con them into getting some help from them. You can see this, like I said, this is pretty stiff. This is what I was talking about right here. Let's see if I can get this up here. The, um, the clip is already there for the, the brace, okay? And then the, the M6 screw actually comes in the kit, okay? So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put a a couple of screws in here. Let me see if I can get a couple of these. Now the instructions are really, really good. They're um, they're very detailed, so you're not going to have any uh, any problems with it. I will point out that uh, your the side winglets is a must on this. The instructions are saying that it is part of the structural support of the wing, or of the, of the spoiler, the splitter I should say, and so it is definitely something that you're going to need to, um, to install, okay, so, um, but I think it defeats the, the, the whole purpose of it if you didn't have that in the first place. So just be very careful, don't let, you know, I mean, it'll, it'll hold here as you can see guys, but you don't want to just drop it because it could very well break it. Okay, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to put some of these screws in just to get it, get it lined up here. And um, you're also going to need a riveter, a uh, rivet gun. There's, uh, there's actually 14, 14 rivets that you're going to put in. So you're going to have your original factory screws. And you can see I am just literally just snugging them with my finger. I am not, not going crazy here. Let's see, is this one? Is this one of the ones that has a hole? Actually, I think it's this one here. Yeah. That one might be too short. So you're just getting the factory screws in place. There's another one right here. So these are the same screws. Actually, we can use one of these short ones up here in the front. Okay. And then we can come over here over to this side right here, get this one started. Okay, 
So now we've got all of our, our factory screws back in here, okay? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run those screws up and then after that what we can do is we can take our, we can take our rivet gun our drill and we'll drill out these other holes that are already here and we'll put, be able to put those rivets in all the way around. Once we get that done, then we can take our, our uh, support bracket here like so, the support brace, and we'll be able to go from right here to here like so. Okay, So that gives us the support so it's not dragging down. And this is what also adjusts, makes it so you get the, the proper angle of attack. So instead of it being down like that, it's pointed up just a hair. So it's a really, really great design. I'm really, um, uh, I'm, like I said, very impressed with how this looks. So let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and start screwing this together here. this in place and it's, it's on there pretty solid already but like I said we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna rivet the um, all the other ones here we'll go all the way around on both sides we'll rivet those on and um, before I start this riveting I'm gonna test fit these rods these support rods just to make sure that they are exactly where we need them to be make sure they go like this so we'll get them right where they where they need to be before we rivet we can always rivet them after the fact. I know the instructions say to rivet them, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put these on first, um, just to uh, just to have a little bit of um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for um, assurance that everything fits. Okay, so we're going to do that now, and we're going to make sure we test fit our brackets here before we do the rivets. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull this 10 millimeter screw out right here. And we're going to put in our bracket. You can see how it's angled downward. Okay, see that right here? So we're going to go ahead and we'll use it like that. I'm going to put this in here. We'll get it started. <clears throat> Still making it where you can adjust it a little bit. Okay. Then this is a this is a T30 Torx that we're going to use here for the screws that are supplied. Okay. We're going to go ahead and we're going to get that to line up like that. Now we can go ahead and we can tighten this up. Okay, just like that. We can go back to our 10 millimeter over here. Okay, there we go. And now that we got that tight, we can go ahead and we can do it to the other side. Make sure that that's nice and tight like that. Okay. Now we can go and we can move on to the other side. Okay, so it's over here. I'm going to switch my my fitting out here again. Go back to my 10 millimeter socket. Over here. Okay, we're not tightening this all the way. This way we can still move it. And then we're going to go ahead and put our T30 in, just like that. Start that little guy. Make sure it's nice and snug. All right. And then we'll go back to our 10 millimeter, and we'll tighten that up. All right. So that part's done. Okay. So now what we can do is we have we just have the rivets we have to drill, and then rivet in. And then we have to put our our side uh, our side winglets on. So even though this thing feels extremely solid, you can see right here on this outer edge, it's a, there's a lot of flex to this right here. So this is why they're saying that you need to be able to have the side winglet, which is right here. And this will give you this right here will give you the support you're going to need. These are going to go right into the the same three factory screws in the wheel well. And then you've got some. Uh, two-sided stick tape that goes in and so this will go 
the it'll slide into it like let me see if I can get it over here. It'll actually slide right up against it here. Okay. So anyway, that's the next step. We're gonna go ahead and start drilling the drilling for the rivets, and then we'll be good to go. For our next step, guys, we've got to drill out the the rivet holes. Now you need to use a these rivets are three three sixteen drill bits that you're gonna use. So you're just gonna drill out this, okay, like so. Okay, here. And I misspoke earlier. There's actually um, there's actually nine nine holes, not fourteen. The kit comes with fourteen, but you don't need you don't need that many of them. So there's all nine of them are done now. So now we'll go ahead and we'll put the rivets in. Um, I have an air pneumatic uh, a riveter, so um, I'm going to use that. If you just have a hand riveter, that's fine too. It's not not a big deal. It just saves you a little bit of squeezing. Okay. So uh, we'll go ahead and we'll do that here next. Okay. So guys, this, uh, so guys, when you're uh, when you're doing these, whether it's an air uh, air one or a, a regular hand riveter, you want to make sure that when you're dropping these out, that they drop on the floor and they fall out of the collector for whatever reason. That you uh, that you make sure you pick them up off the floor so you don't end up with a nail because they act, they'll act just like nails in your tires. Okay. And we're getting close here, guys. Just got one more to do. All right. So that part's done. Now that we've got the front drilled in and all connected up, we've got to get uh, the wheels out of the way here a little bit so it will, we can get into these screws down here. So we've got three of them right here that hold the fender well together. Okay. These are 15. Yeah, these are 15 torques. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and pull these loose. Okay, just like that. So you can see here, guys. Here's the winglet right here. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna be able to put this up into the wheel well here, and we'll be able to secure it in, in there with the screws. Okay, once we get that done, then what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to pull the, the two-sided stick tape here and then lift the spoiler up enough to lock it in place and then we'll, we'll press it together. So basically what it'll do is it will create a, a bond in between which will create a, a very, very stiff corner which will keep it from, you know, from tearing up, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put those screws in now. I'm trying to stay out of you guys' way so you guys can see, but it's kind of hard sometimes. So, I mean, this is, let me see here. I've got a lot of light in a lot of different directions. So, which makes it almost impossible for me to see because I've got it so bright for you guys. But that's okay. And we'll get this one in there too. So now, this is pretty much, I mean, this is in there all the way. This is just about ready to connect. So what we're going to do, I'm going to move the camera up here in the front so you can see exactly what I'm doing, okay? So now that we've got our screws tight up here, all we have to do is we're going to pull this two-sided stick tape loose, okay? So we're just going to peel these little guys back, just like this. Make sure you get it all off beforehand, okay? And then, 
that point, what you're going to do is you're going to move this over and you're going to push up at the same time. Because there's a little, there's a little latch, per se, that allows this to go into the bottom of the spoiler, a splitter. And then at that point, you're, you're pushing up and you're pushing in. And then there you go. So we're going to go over to the next side and we'll get that done. Okay. So we are now on the driver's side and we're going to do the exact same thing. We're just going to take those three screws out. Okay. And then at that point we can go ahead and we can put our other winglet on. Now before we do that, let me show you something here. I've elected not to do this, but in the instructions it does say that you could take and you would set this up there and you would adjust this hole. You can see there's a little hole here in this winglet. And you can drill a hole into this front inside edge of this, of this winglet on the inside edge. I've choose not to do that. Um, I, I can see that this thing is extremely strong and I think they've just kind of over-engineered it. And so I don't want to drill a hole into my, uh, my splitter. I mean, the only, the only thing that you're going to have is you have, you have already got your brackets to keep it from going down. The only thing that it could do is go up and then this is going to press against this. So there's no, there's no give, there's no way that it can do that. So uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go and take the chance of, of uh, scraping this up on the inside, um, you know. If I thought it was a structural problem, then I would go ahead and do it. But um, I'm not doing it. But I wanted to bring that to your attention. I didn't show you, tell you that on the other side. So I'm just going to move this kind of out of the way. I'm going to pull this tape back like so, just like that. Okay, and then I'm going to push it back, and I'm going to push up at the same time. As you heard it click in there. Okay. And then I'm holding it in place for a second to get it to be able to bond. After that, you're good. I'm just going to snug these up. Just like that. Alright. And you're done, guys. So, um, like I said, they do give you a couple of these little clips. Let me show you that. They're just little push pins, okay, and you could use those, and you could have drilled a hole into the side and then pushed it through the push pin. I chose not to do that because I didn't don't like the look of it. So guys, that's about it. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to straighten the uh, wheel out here so I don't have to deal with that when I lower the car down. Um, I'm going to grab the camera and I'm going to give you a, a right up here a full shot so you can see what it looks like there and then we'll lower the car down and then you'll get, get to see what it looks like okay so what do you think of that guys doesn't that look great look how aggressive that thing is sticks out there just like mine I'm gonna walk you over to my my ZR1 front end and you can see the similarities there and how it looks and one of the things that's really good about this is that these side winglets actually still don't stick out so far that it makes the, the Z51 look funny. Um, they're not sticking out that much farther. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to lower the car down so you'll be able to see it at the right level. So you can see how aggressive that looks guys. Um, uh, it looks really really nice to me. The car is sitting a little bit high because of the uh, suspension has not been adjusted because it hasn't rolled backwards or forwards yet. But uh, we'll get it back out on the street and we'll be able to, I'll be able to show you around it. Okay, but um, I think it looks really nice and uh, I hope you guys agree. I'm going to demonstrate to you guys 
This is the typical way that you're entering, normally would enter a curb. So I'm gonna back up, and then that way you can actually see the amount of clearance that you have, okay? So here you go. This is what she looks like. Very, very aggressive, but yet not too much for the Stingray. We've had stage threes on there before and it just didn't look right. The wheels look too small. It really does look good now. It's not sticking out any farther than the original or the mud flap. So it, it looks very well balanced see there all the way around. We'll do a complete walk around here, but let's see what I'm talking about. Look back from the front, or back from the back going front. It's only sticking out just a hair, not way out like a like the Grand Sport one would be. Okay. I think it just completes the car, really looks well, has a great angle of attack, as you can see, and I'll try to put that information up on the screen. Um, ACS did a really good job about putting a uh, graphic up, and I'm gonna see if I can find that so I can put it in the video. So here's mine, guys, on the, on the ZR1 front end. And then here's the new ZR1 style for the standard bumper from ACS. It looks awesome. But it looks so close in design. It's really, really nice. And like I said, it gives you all that extra clearance that you didn't have before. So, I think you're going to be happy with it. So guys, hopefully you found this video helpful and informative. And if you did, you'll know exactly where to get yours. Go to acscomposite.com. I'm going to put that information right here on the screen. Be sure and tell them that Scott from the Corvette channel sent you and that they'll get you taken care of. All right. Uh, guys, I want to thank you guys for watching the channel, for watching all of my live broadcasts that I do. I, I see you guys are always tuning in on me, uh, and that's so nice to see. It's been a fun ride, I can tell you that. We've been doing it a long time now. We've been doing it since 2018 and uh, I'm having a great time. And as you know, we've already opened our shop and we are going at it like gangbusters and uh, we are installing pretty much everything you've seen me do on the, uh, on the videos as well as we just opened up a Ceramic Pro dealership where we are doing Ceramic Pro coatings now. So if you guys are interested and you're in the area, be sure and reach out to me. I'm gonna put that information right here on the screen and we'll get you going. Another thing, as far as YouTube is concerned, if you guys not have, if you guys have not already subscribed, please go hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and hit that bell so you'll be alerted of our next uploads. One other thing I want to touch base with before we go is that Corvette Channel is putting on a car show in August. We're going to be doing a car show. I've been hinting around on my live broadcast. I put a post up on Facebook, but I want to let you guys know that August 25th, 6th and 7th, we are going to be doing a show up at the Grand Sierra Resort up in Reno. And we're going to be doing, it's going to be called the Corvette and Camaro Invasion of Reno, Nevada. And this is a show that is going to be indoors. So those of you that always want to be able to go to hot August nights and you can't go because you have a new car, a new Corvette, a new Camaro, um, this is your opportunity, guys. We are, we have a 45,000 square foot venue that we're going to be able to have that is air conditioned. We're also going to have vendors there. We have a little over 3,000 square foot area just for vendors. So if any of you vendors are watching and you guys would like to be a sponsor, 
and come on in and bring your product in for display and or you want to send in, uh, maybe you want to sponsor it just for some raffle prizes or something like that. Uh, we've got a lot of people that are doing that right now. So uh, this is going to be a big event. Uh, we're going to be doing, uh, you're going to be basically checking in on Thursday evening and then uh, Friday morning, you'll be getting all of your information, your goodie bags, all that type of stuff. And then Friday morning at some time to be determined, we will be doing a poker run. And the poker run is, I mean, it's going to be great, guys. We're going to have five stops. We're going to have three top hands winning a total of $600. Okay, so um, we've got some good prizes here. Also, as far as the trophies go and prizes for the show itself, the Corvettes and the Camaros will be judged separately. So they will not be competing against each other. The only one that they get to compete against each other is the best of show trophy. We are working at it. It's probably going to be about a five or six foot trophy. So if you do come, you better make sure you bring room to be able to bring it home. Um, and um, that's about it, guys. Be sure and go to Corvette Channel, uh, CorvetteChannel.com. Go to our events tab, and you'll find all the information on how to get uh, get yourself registered. And then it will also give you the information for the uh, uh, for the hotel information. We've already already blocked out 300 rooms, and um, they are going really quick. I am really surprised. I think at this point we have 155 people that are already going. And that's um, about four days after we put this up. Uh, so, so this is very, um, this is a very big thing. I think it's going to be a big show. I think it's going to be fun. Uh, what we're going to be able to do after the poker run is that's when you're going to come back to the Grand Sierra, and you're going to be able to bring your car in that evening, and you're going to be able to go ahead and stage it, polish it, do whatever you want to do to it. If you don't, and if you don't want to do it that night, you don't have to. The doors will open in the morning, and then you can polish your car uh, in, the, in the morning. But if those of you who want to go to Reno, you want to, you know, have a have a few drinks, do a few things, and enjoy yourself with your friends. This is going to be air conditioned. We're going to have uh, drinks there. Uh, we'll have a we'll have a bar there. We're also going to have uh, food there. Um, so you'll be able to purchase that and be able to have a drink with your friends while you're getting your car ready in the air conditioning. I don't know how much better you could get with that. Um, and then the next morning, uh, once you get your car ready to go, you can go home, you can go back up, gamble some, do whatever you want to do, but you don't have to get up at the crack of dawn to get your car ready unless you just want to. Um, but then at that point, you can get your car ready in the morning if you'd like, but the car's already there, it's already warm, it's dry, it's, you know, that, that whole thing. So it's all indoors, and um, it just promises to be a great show. And like I said, there's also, I'm not going to tell you that yet, we'll fill, we'll fill you in a little bit more on that one as we go, but there also is not just trophies, but there is cash prizes. There's also, ACS has... They have stepped up tremendously and they are sending us uh, some different things uh, for raffle prizes and displays for the show. Okay, so um, they're going to be sending us stuff for Corvette as well as Camaro. And, um, you know, I, I can't ask for any better. They, they've, they're just the great people. And I hope you guys be sure and give them some business. And uh, like I said, you'll, you'll be able to see some of their stuff there at the show too, as well as our cars, which, you know, these are kind of mobile showrooms, so you'll be able to see some of their stuff um, right there in person. That way you'll, you'll know, if you haven't already determined to buy it over the internet watching my videos, you'll be able to do it then, okay? So guys, I just want to thank you for watching. We'll give you more information as we go with the car show, but be sure and go check that out. Uh, that's CorvetteChannel.com. Go to the events tab and then go ahead and register and register with the hotel and we'll get you set up, okay? Um, so, guys, just want to say thanks again for watching and we'll talk to you later. Thank you for watching the Corvette Channel. Don't forget to hit subscribe.